Tara siete coro sondo si. Lara coro sienda satara kanda so toto siete keye. Tara siete coro so la hande a te se. Ha coso to la hasite. Poronda siete cosuto la hande a chi sete keye. Who among you will seek after me? Who among you will lay aside their own life and take up mine? Who among you will pick up my word and put their word in their heart so they can have me with them, so they can ask what they will and it shall be given unto them. Who among you has the courage to follow me? Who among you has the courage to let me guide you, lead you, walk with you? Fix you so you can be like me in the earth, saith the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hello, I'm Kathy Davidson, and I'd like you to join me as I minister the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, who is, who was, who is to come. That's where the power is. It's in the gospel. Let's open with prayer. My heavenly father, open our eyes that we can see. Open our ears that we can hear. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. Father, grant a spirit of grace on this message. And let us only, only see Jesus. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. What you heard at the beginning of the program was a tongue and interpretation. One of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Do you know that they are available for you? All the gifts are for all. If you can read 1 Corinthians 12, they are for all of us. Why? So we can walk with God. They are for you. Do you want them? I'll show you how to get them because you know what? They are part of the kingdom of God. They come along with it. Turn with me to Mark 1, 14 and 15 again. Oh, there is so much instruction, so much power here. I hope you're beginning to hear. I hope you have the courage, the courage to believe what the word of God says because Jesus said in John 10, 35, the scripture cannot, cannot, be broken. If you believe it, it'll bring about everything that you need. It'll be answer all your questions. And like I have said before, the answer to every one of your problems is the gospel, is the gospel. Let's go to Mark 1, 14. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee. One of his first messages, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, so what is the kingdom? Jesus says it right here. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. We know the kingdom of God is with power. It is not in just word. It is in power. We know the kingdom of God is within us. So that power is in us. It comes from the belly. And we know that it is Father's, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So why don't you have it? You have to believe. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. How do we get the kingdom? We get it with faith. And Jesus tells us how. The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe the gospel. There is the instruction of Jesus in one of his very first messages, repent you. And like I've said all these messages before, repent means to change what you're thinking, change your will, go from this to this, go from what is not true to the truth. Did you know the truth is the gospel? Did you know your world is going to burn up one day, the earth and the heavens, and the only thing left is going to be the word of God, and then there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. But the word of God lasts forever. The word of God is eternal. When you put your trust in that word, and that word is the gospel. 
repent you and believe the gospel. Change the way you're thinking and believe the gospel. Now, what is that gospel? First Corinthians 15, verse three and four. I'm gonna read it again to you because this is the definition of the gospel that Jesus said you have to repent and believe. Believe, trust in, adhere to, commit to the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3, the Apostle Paul speaking, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. All this was done. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was not happenstance. It had been prophesied since the Garden of Eden. Repent, change what you're thinking, and believe the gospel. Change what you're believing in and believe the gospel. Notice in one of Jesus' very first messages, he doesn't say repent and, and, and follow the Ten Commandments. He didn't say that at all, did he? He didn't say repent and obey the law of Moses, did he? No, he didn't. Do you see that? He didn't say anything here about the Ten Commandments, and he didn't say anything here about the law of Moses. What did he say? He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Believe the death, burial, and resurrection of the gospel. I want you to go with me to Romans 1.16. Here, we're going to find out where the power of God, that miraculous power that God used, that Jesus, that the Father used through Jesus when Jesus was on the earth. If you will read, Jesus said, none of these works I can do on my own. He said, I can't do this on my own. It is the Father working through me. It was the Spirit working through Jesus. So, where? Did that power come from? Where does that miraculous power, the power that does the miracles, where do we get it from? Do you know it's written in the Bible? Do you have the courage to believe it? It tells you right here where the miraculous power comes from. How Jesus healed all those people when he was walking on the earth. How the apostle Paul healed all those people, cast out all those devils. How how Timothy, how Peter, how all the apostles, how did they lay hands on the sick and recover? And they recovered. How did they cast out devils? Did you know the answer is in the word? It's in Romans 1. Go with me to verse 16. Do you have the courage to believe this? Do you have the courage to believe this? Romans 1. Paul speaking, he said, for I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He's not ashamed of it. He's not afraid to use it. He's not afraid to rely on it. He's not afraid to commit to it. He is not ashamed to trust it. He had all that experience. And he says it right here. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not afraid to walk in it. I'm not afraid to trust it. I'm not afraid to commit to it. Why? Why? Why was Paul not afraid to trust in the gospel only? This was a man that was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. This was a man that walked in the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses perfectly. And yet he laid it all down. He put it all aside for this gospel. Why? I'll show you in this verse. Do you have the courage to believe it? Do you have the courage to believe what the Bible says? All right, 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, said Paul, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For it is, what is the it? I used to be a seventh grade grammar teacher. Oh, I know the objects of the predicates and your object of your, of your prepositional phrase. I know all that. So right here, when it says, for it is the power of God, what is it? 
What is the word it? It's the gospel. It is the gospel. The apostle Paul right here tells you where the miraculous power comes from. The power to heal you. The power to bring you your job. The power to bring the money that you need is right here. Paul says it. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation. Now, that salvation, that salvation is not just born again. We have to look at the words. We have to look at them in different versions, in different, in different Bible versions. We have to look at them in our concordances. Thank God, God gave us the concordance. We don't have to go to school to learn Greek. Somebody already did the work for us. You know what that salvation word means? It means everything you need. It means deliverance. It means pers uh, preservation. It means safety. It means salvation. It means health. So Paul right here is saying that the gospel is the power, the miraculous power of God to get salvation, to get safety, to get health to get preservation, to get deliverance. That's why he wasn't ashamed of it. He wasn't afraid to trust it. What this gospel has done for me. Oh, what this gospel has done for me. Let me tell you a testimony. One of the things that God has done for me through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was back in the late 80s, I had two children at the time. I was having some difficulty. My, I come from a family that had insanity on both sides, mental illness on both sides of my family. We had family members institutionalized. We had many that had nervous breakdowns. We had several seeing doctors, seeing psychiatrists and counselors for their mental illness. And I, when I was in the late eighties, was having some difficulties too. I was having thoughts of suicide. I was waking up in the morning, early morning in terror. Terror, so afraid I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even speak, terror. I was having thoughts of insanity. And I remember one day specifically, it was a Friday night, I was asked to go give my testimony at a meeting. And so on that afternoon, I was getting my two children ready and me ready to go to this meeting. And it, there was more pressure that day than I remember in a very long time. And I was getting my children ready and it was as if I was gonna lose reality at any time. I was, I, I, I set aside, set my children, in another room, I walked into my bedroom. I thought I was gonna lose it. And I said to myself, I'm gonna lose it right here. And there is nobody here to take my children. I was afraid. I was afraid I wasn't going to make it. I was afraid I was gonna lose all reality. When I walked into my bedroom, I looked up and I talked to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Now, mind you, I was born again. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues. But yet those, those spirits from my family were still in me. And they were causing me a lot of trouble. And I looked up to heaven from my bedroom and I said, Father, how long are you going to leave the righteous forsaken? I needed help. I said, how long are you gonna leave the righteous forsaken? I said that several times. I felt a little better. I went back and I got my children ready. I got ready, I went to the meeting. I gave my testimony, nothing great. Not a wondrous, miraculous evening, not at all. But that Sunday morning, I went to church. And during the time that we were praising God, 
we were, I was standing there praising with my family next to me. The power of God came up in me like it had never before. And as I felt the power of God on me, I heard the voice of Jesus. And he said to me, oh, thank you, Jesus. He said to me, Kathy, I am here to deliver you from the insanity and terror that is in your family. And as I stood there, I shook. I shook like a leaf. And the power of God on me, delivering me from all those thoughts of suicide, from all that insanity, from all that terror, standing there. And, and the leader of our church, Doyle, came over and he just stood next to me. He saw what God was doing. He just stood there and watched and prayed. Never touched me, never said a word. God, Jesus, Jesus delivered me that day. And from that day forward, I have been free from the terror. I have been free from the thoughts of suicide. I have been free from the insanity. That's what he wants for you. That's why the father sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to save us, not to condemn us. Oh, that's why he sent Jesus. He wants us all delivered. He wants us all set free. He wants us all healed. He wants us all prosperous. Why? Because he's a father. Are you a father? Don't you want the best things for your children? Are you a mother? Don't you want your children to have the best things? Well, he's our heavenly father. And he loved us so much. He sent Jesus to pay for our iniquity to pay for our rebellion, not only to take our sins, but to take on every consequence of those sins. And one of the consequences of those sins is insanity. I have been free since that day. And you know when he delivered me? When I was a mother. I wasn't even a business owner at the time. I wasn't even a teacher at the time. I was just a mother. A housewife, and um, I take that back. There was no such thing as just a mother and housewife. No, those are beautiful jobs that God gives. God is for us. He is not against us, and he proved it. He proved his love towards you when he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to take on your sin. He sent Jesus to pay to pay for what everything you've done, to pay for every iniquity, every sin. He sent Jesus to do that. He sent Jesus to take on your sickness. He sent Jesus to take on all your pain. He sent Jesus to take on your poverty. He doesn't want you poor. Jesus wasn't. No, he wasn't. He had everything he needed when he was on the earth. And everything was provided for. And that's the same God wants for you. He wants everything you need provided for you. The only thing we are required to do to receive this power, to receive these blessings, is to believe the gospel. Is to believe what Jesus did for you. Trust in what Jesus did for you. Adhere to what Jesus did for you. Commit to what Jesus did for you. Let's look at that verse again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. That gospel is the power, the miracle working power, the miraculous power of God unto salvation unto deliverance, unto preservation, unto health, unto safety. To who? Who is that power given to? Who is that power given to? 
says it right here to everyone that believeth, to everyone that believeth, not just the preacher behind the pulpit, not just the apostle, not just the prophet, to everyone, to us mothers, to us teenagers, to us fathers, to, to everyone, to rich, poor, black, white, yellow, green, it's for everyone. It says to everyone that believeth. It says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That Greek is Gentile. Anyone who is not a Jew, that power is for us also. You know what that is? That is the love of God. That is how much God loves you. That is how much God loved you. God loves you right now in the middle of your sin. If you are sitting there right now, up to your ears in your sin, if you are listening right now, that's why God sent Jesus. That's why God sent Jesus to get you out of that sin, to get you out of your trouble to get you out of that torment, that insanity, that depression, that oppression. That is why the father sent his son so he could make you his child too. We are all children of God if we believe. That's why God sent Jesus. Do you want that? Do you want out of that? Do you want to walk with God? It is available to you. This gospel, the death, burial, and Jesus, where all your sins are forgiven, where all your sicknesses are healed, where all your pain is taken away, where your poverty is ended, where you, where you find safety, where you find benefit, where you find welfare, where you find peace. My friends, there is nothing better than knowing there is peace between you and God and Jesus. There is nothing better. Oh, you can be, you can be in the middle of terrible trouble. When you have that peace of God, when you know that God is for you, when you know that God is with you, when you know he is all powerful and will get you out, there is no better peace. There is no better feeling knowing that you are okay in God. And that is available to you. But the first thing you must do is be born again. Be born again. Romans 10. Let's go to it. And I will read to you how you can be born again. It's been a little while. Romans 10, 9. It says, if thou, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. If thou will confess with my, thy mouth, your mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. You know, I've had some that say, I don't know if I believe that Jesus raised from the dead. You know what? You tell Jesus that. You tell Jesus that. Help me to believe that you were raised from the dead. You know, that's a prayer he'll answer. Do you want born again? Do you want that peace with God? Do you want that power working in your life that you know that you know that you know that you are loved by God? And pray this prayer with me. Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Lead me. Teach me. Fix me. And I ask this in your name, Jesus. I guarantee 
If you prayed that in sincerity, you got your answer. You got your answer. Verse 13 of that same chapter, Romans 10 says, for whosoever, whosoever, that includes you, that includes me, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, Jesus shall be saved. And you just called on that name. There's your guarantee. Amen. Amen.